Amen. So the part of the chapter here that I want to focus on is a famous story in Genesis about Joseph. <clears throat> but is uh, starting verse number 2. And it says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. And it came to pass, from that time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sakes, and the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house and in the field. And so, the title of my sermon tonight is, you know, get a job and do it right. That's the name, that's the title of my sermon, get a job and do it right. Joseph right here is a great example of someone who was put into extreme circumstances and somehow he ended up with all these great jobs. You know, it just rolls on. If you keep reading further in the book of Genesis, you know, he, uh, he, he ends up being the second in command to Pharaoh. And so, but Joseph, he started out, you know, and he, he, he was sold into slavery, and then Potiphar took him in, and he's seen that he was a prosperous man, and the Lord was with him, and so he put him into a place of, uh, to where he ruled over everything in the house. The man didn't even know what he had except for what was put on his plate. That was it. And so Joseph is a good example of somebody who did a good job with uh, his job. He did it right. And, you know, all because of uh, you know, the wicked woman in the house that he, he was thrown into jail. But then we see later on in the chapter, look down at verse, uh, <clears throat> verse 20. It says, And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in prison, and the Lord was with Joseph, and showed him mercy, and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. So notice the theme here is these guys, the keeper of the prison, Potiphar, they didn't have to worry about what Joseph was doing. Because he was a good worker. He did what he was supposed to do. They didn't have to worry about Joseph. And that's how we should be at our jobs. We should be, if you work for someone, you should be one of those people that the boss doesn't have to worry about. You know, one of the people that he can send them to do something and he knows they're going to do it right. And we're going to look at some examples and some things we can do to be a good worker. Uh, we, can, we can get a job and this is how we're going to keep our job and excel and advance in our job. So, uh, turn with me to uh, Proverbs chapter number 6. Proverbs chapter number 6. I'm going to read uh, <clears throat> Proverbs 26, uh, verse 13. It says, The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his, hideth his hand in his bosom, it grieveth him to bring it to his mouth again. So, my first point is, you know, don't drag into work. Don't be one of those people that just comes in late, they're always dragging, they're not ready to work when they get there. But be, on the other hand, be the one that's ready. They're early. Be on time or early if possible. The slothful man, it says here in Proverbs where I, where I, I read, he's always making excuses for why he's late. You know, this guy in the passage says there's a lion in the way. You know, there's a lion in the streets. You know, I, you know the, the car wouldn't start. Or uh, my alarm didn't go off. That's the one that everybody wants to use. The alarm, it just didn't go off magically. Or, or any, any other example. But this guy, there's a lion in the streets. You know, that's pretty, pretty extreme. Try that one with your boss. Uh, you know, as the door turneth upon his bed, so did the slothful upon his bed. So it gives us the reason, really. The reason, really, is because this guy is just turning over on his bed. He just doesn't get out of bed. He's slothful. He, he, that's the real reason he's late and not getting to work on time is because he's rolling in his bed. He's going back to sleep. And sleep begets sleep. If you sleep a lot, you, you're, you're even more tired. You're always tired if you just keep sleeping. Sleep, sleep. You're always sleeping. So, and then it goes on. It says that he hideth his hand in his bosom and it grieveth to bring it to his mouth again. So he doesn't even want to bring his mouth up to eat. He's just so lazy, this guy. But I had you turn to Proverbs chapter 6, 
Look down at verse number 6. It says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little slumber, a little, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thine, thy want as an armed man. So, right here in this passage, we see the example of the ant. You know, we should get, we should go to the ant and consider her ways. And when when I was a kid, I would mess with ants. In Florida, there's a lot of ant piles everywhere. I mean, there's like fire ants, there's sugar ants, they're everywhere. Uh, and people don't know the difference between a fire ant and a sugar ant, so they would get bit by these fire ants all the time. They're really, really bad. But if the sugar ants, if you play, if you if you mess with them, sugar ants don't bite. So you can like knock over their ant pile, and immediately an ant will just start rebuilding that ant pile. They're just going to start rebuilding. They're going to start from scratch. You could just smash it out to nothing, and they're all going to go out. And they're going to gather it all back up. You can go into your yard in Florida if you have a lot of ant piles. You can just knock them all down. And tomorrow, when you get up, they'll all be back. The ants will rebuild their ant pile. And there's no doubt about it. 100% I've done it. They do it. And, you know, the funny thing about an ant is that they can carry, you know, so much of their weight, uh, so many, much more times their weight. They can carry up, so some places say, you know, 10 to 100 times their weight. That's pretty crazy. But the ant is a very good worker, and another thing that people will, will do is they have like an ant farm, you know, where they have this thing of glass, and the ants are just always working. They never, you never see them sleeping. They're always working. The ants are working all the time. So you have to consider the ant. You know, they're they're always working. They're uh, they're never slothful. They're never uh, they're never lazy. You know, you can. You know, come by and kick a pile of sand, and they're gonna they're gonna redo it. You know, if you're digging a hole and somebody fills it back in, well, you know, you gotta shovel it back out without even thinking. So, uh, but it says in verse ten, it says in verse nine, how long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come, as one that tra travaileth, and as and I want as an armed man. So, you know, if you're going to be lazy, if you're going to slumber and sleep all the time, you're going to uh, come to poverty eventually. And obviously, we see that everywhere in Arizona. People that don't work, they're on the side of the street corner begging for uh, money from people. And you don't want to end up being one of those people. They keep children. They keep you don't want to. Turn with me to uh, Mark chapter 13. We'll see one more quick place here on this point is, uh, you know, don't drag into work. You know, be early, be on time. I'm going to read Proverbs 18, 9. It says, He that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. So if you're lazy and you're not, you don't work good, you're, you're also a great waster. So it's another bad thing you don't want to be. And you all often hear people, you know, you're wasting my time. You know, somebody shows up to do a job, say you own a business, they show up to do a job at your place, and you're just like, are you going to get to work? I mean, you're, I'm paying you, right? I, you're, it's an hour, hourly charge, and you're, you're just wasting my time. They're wasters. Lazy people are great wasters. You know, get to work, sluggard. But look down at Mark 13, and verse number 32, it says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Less coming, suddenly he finds you sleeping. And I and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So right here, this is a, a parable here. The Son of Man takes a far journey, but he gives uh, authority to servants and every man his work. And he tells the porters to watch. 
So that's the one thing they're supposed to do. That's their job, is to watch. And he's saying that they don't know when he's coming back. They don't know, but they have to watch always. <clears throat> but lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. So we need to work and not <clears throat> be, be caught sleeping. We need to get out of bed, you know, roll. It's hard to get out of bed sometimes, but guess what? When you get out of bed, whatever you do, drink coffee or get a shower, you know, wake up and, and do something. Read the Bible <clears throat> and get ready for work. So <clears throat> don't be that person that rolls into work late. Be the one that's on time because the boss is going to see that. He's going to see that you're on time, you're always ready to work, and if you, the other thing that a sluggard or the person that's always rolling in late is they always have this, this appearance to them that they're just, you know, dragging. You know, you can just see the person strolling into work, you know, they're late, <clears throat> they don't really care. So, but number two, we're going to look at, uh, turn to Matthew 21, Matthew 21. <clears throat> so first off, you don't want to be that sluggard, you want to be on time. Matthew chapter 21, I'll read Proverbs 21.8, it says, The way of a man is forward and strange, but as for the pure, his work is right. So we want to do our work right, and so we need to do what we're told to do. Do what we're told to do. You know, I, my dad had this guy that worked for him, and uh, when he was told something to do, the guy would sprint. He would, like, run and do it. And my dad uses that guy to it as an example to everybody these days. And now I'm using it as an example. But I was there. I witnessed the guy. He, he would run and do every job that he would ask him to do. He would just take off. His shoes were tied. He was ready to go. So it, that's, that's, that's an extreme example. But look down at Matthew 21, verse number 28. It says, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first, and he said, Son... Go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. <clears throat> and he came to the second and said likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say to him the first, Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. So what we can learn here is we don't need to just give lip service to our job. You know, if we say we're going to do something, we need to go and do it. This first guy, he said he wasn't going to go do it, but then he went and did it anyways. You know, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that, but this guy, he did get the job done. But you should just, you know, shut your mouth and just do your job. When you're told to do something, just go do it. You don't, you shouldn't have some uh, smart remark for, you know, why do I need to do this? No, you're being paid to do a job, then you need to just go and do the work. So the second guy, he he says, okay, I'm going to go do it, and then he just doesn't do it. You know, it's like sending a guy to go buy a part. He goes to uh, McDonald's instead. And then he comes back, and he's like, tells the boss he just couldn't find it. It's like, I mean, man, we were waiting on you for that part. Now we can't do the job. It's like, you got to uh, do what you're told because, you know, it, time is wasting. You know, we don't want to be a waster. We don't want to go revert back to point one. We don't want to be that great waster of time. But uh, do what you're told. You know, don't give lip service to your job. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, oh, like, hey, this was an example I thought of, you know, as an, uh, being an electrician. Right? What if you, you were like the helper, the electrician's helper, and he's like, go make sure the breaker's off. It's like, okay, you run over there and you, you just didn't even check and you came back and then, you know, you're not only uh, not doing what you're told, but you're putting the electrician that you're working for, you're putting him in jeopardy, right? Because you don't even know if it's off. Or what if you get over there and you don't know what you're doing? You know, so that's another point is if you don't know what you're doing, you need to ask. You know, you need to find out what's going on and ask what to do. Because, I mean, if you're the helper, you're there to learn. And so, if you don't know what to do, just ask. That's, that's an easy way to learn what to do. Ask, somebody's going to tell you, and just do it. So, very simple. <clears throat> the, uh, Proverbs 20, verse 11 says, Even a child is known by his doings, 
whether his work be pure and whether it be right. So children are even known by their doings. <clears throat> you know, you send your kids to do things and you have to go check on them. You have to go check on your kids. Sometimes they, they surprise you. They do it right and you don't have to uh, correct them. But that's how children are. Children have to be supervised most of the time. They have to be watched. They have to be, you know, you have to constantly tell them what to do. But that's a good thing that you are telling them what to do. Some people just let their kids do whatever they want. Make your kids do things. Give them tasks to do. You know, go grab something for me. Or throw this away. Or any, any little thing, any menial task. You know, kids like to help. Kids do like to help. My kids, if you ask them to do something, they, they're glad to go run and do it. They may not always do it right, but they will give an attempt most of the time. But, uh, you know, some children, uh, some children are better than others. Some kids catch on really fast. And they just, when you tell them to do something, they do it, and they're just well behaved. They just, they catch on really quick. Um, but that's one thing, as an adult, we need to grow out of that, and we need to work without having to be supervised. Now, I, I understand that some people aren't ever going to attain to this. Some people always have to be supervised. That's just a fact of life. Some people just can't work without supervision. You can't trust them. But we as Christians, as Bible believers, should learn from what the Bible is telling us, and we should attain to that, to where somebody doesn't have to watch us. Uh, just like Joseph, they didn't have to even worry about anything in their house. The prisoner, uh, the keeper of the, the prison didn't have to worry about the prison at all. He didn't have to worry about the prisoners. Joseph was a prisoner. I mean, he was put in charge over the prisoners. So that's pretty ironic. But turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. So my third point is, you know, work, work like your boss is watching at all times. Because that will keep you honest, I mean, all the time. Because most people stand around and they're always, you know, looking around to see if the boss is coming or if, uh, if dad's watching or mom or if whoever's looking around, whoever's the, in authority. Uh, but we should just work at all times as if our boss was watching us. So look down at Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 5. It says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing good with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. So right here in Ephesians chapter six, you know, we need to work uh, as unto the Lord, you know, whether or not the boss is looking or whether or not mom or dad is looking, uh, God is always seeing what you're doing. And so we need to work as if we were working for God. You know, do uh, do what uh, you would do if the boss is watching, as in, and God is always watching. He's You're not working, you're working as to the Lord and not to men. So, and it goes on and it even extends this to masters, you know, the people that are in charge. It tells them that, uh, you know, that there's no respect of persons. So, if they, uh, you know, God's going to give a reward to those that, uh, whether they be bond or free, the same shall receive of the Lord. So, he's saying that reward the workers that do the work. That's what he's saying to the masters, because there, neither is there respect of persons with him. So, you know, I've worked for a lot of companies, and, you know, that a lot of companies are true to that, right? I mean, they're going to see the, the good worker, and they're going to reward them, you know, for being a good worker. But there are some companies that are slightly skewed. I've worked for some, and uh, they, don't, they don't reward the good worker. They just, uh, they have their favorites, and they, that's the ones they favor. Well, guess what? They're, they're going to be judged for that one day, because they were put in authority, and they did it wrong. You know, God's saying right here that the master should should do as God does and reward the hard worker. So we need to work as if the boss is watching 
all the time. Uh, turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. Uh, Colossians 3 is kind of a parallel passage to Ephesians 6. It says, Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. So we need to fear God, you know, because He's the one that's seeing our work, whether the boss sees it or not. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Chapter number 3, I think I said 3. Look down at verse number 10. It says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now then, that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. The reason I have you turn here is because, you know, these people that aren't working at all, uh, if, if, you, you may have experienced this on the job site, but some people cannot talk and work at the same time. They, they have to uh, stop working in order to talk about something. You know, and if that's the case, you know, they're, they're, they're in that, that it, it, it instance, they're busybodies, and they need to just work uh, within quietness. They need to stop talking and just work. If you can't talk and work, don't talk. Because that's what you're there to do. You're being paid by the hour or whatever, however you're being paid. Is uh, You need to work with quietness and eat their own bread. In this case right here, th these men are just uh, mooching off people. You know, they're, they're, they're not working at all. And they're trying to take food from other people. But the Bible is real clear that if, if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. And it says that in verse 10, if any would not work, neither should he eat. So we need to work, go out and work, and therefore, you know, be happy when we sit down and eat, knowing that we worked hard all day, and, you know, we, we earned that meal. So, <clears throat> there's a, you know, there's a lot of places to find jobs, you know, I'm not going to go into that. There's jobs all over the place, there's now hiring signs everywhere, so... Uh, the, the last point I want to uh, turn, I want you to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. But this one right here is just, just a kind of a mindset of how we should work. Some people get the wrong idea of work. They, they, they think that you, if you're working, well, we might as well strive to be, you know, we should strive to be rich. You know, but that's not the case. You know, the Bible is real clear. It actually speaks against it. We're going to look at that. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 6. It says, For we brought nothing into the, or verse number seven. Verse number seven. It says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So the Bible is real clear that we should be content with what you have, food and raiment. <clears throat> you know, it's not, not wrong if your job pays well or, or you know, what you do pays well, but it's when you, you're striving to be rich. That's the goal, is to be rich. You know, that's, that's the problem because it, uh, some, it, it, it leads to covetousness. Because, you know, you, you start thinking, you know, what am I going to do with all this money? Now, I mean, there, some people are rich and they can do it right. You know, that's, that's for sure. But it's not, it's few and far between. Uh, Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 4 says, Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly as an eagle toward heaven. You know, so the Bible says, labor not to be rich. You know, cease from thine own wisdom. So in the wisdom of man, you know, if you're going to work, you, most people would say, just, you know, strive to be rich. If you're going to work, go out, make as much money as you can. But the Bible says, cease from thine own wisdom, because those, those riches certainly make themselves wings, and they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. You know, those, those riches aren't going to last on this earth. I, it's funny, I was just riding along, I seen a billboard for the... Uh, 
lottery or whatever. And it's funny how um, the people that win the lottery, you know, they, within like seven years, I forget the statistic, but there's like 70% of people that win the lottery, after seven years, they're bankrupt. Yep. Completely bankrupt. And so there's riches, they just fly away as an eagle towards heaven. And these people, don't, they don't understand. I, I understand that there's a lot of people that win the lottery, they're derelicts, you know. But not always. I mean, you know, random people win all the time. So don't gamble. I'm not, I'm not saying gamble, but uh, i just seen that and made me think of it. Um, be content what you have. Don't seek to be rich. Turn to uh, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to read Ecclesiastes 5.12. It says, The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. So a, a man that's laboring, he's out working all day, and he, he just makes a you know average pay. You know, it says whether he eat little or much, his sleep is sweet. But it goes on and says, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. So the rich man, he can't sleep. He's, he has problems sleeping. And the reason he has problems sleeping is he's always worried about his possessions and the things he has. You know, he can't get his mind off of it. I, I know people like this. I, I personally know people that have sleep problems because of that. You know, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing to be, uh, you know, locked down to uh, a thing, you know, money. It's like it controls your life. It's crazy. But we shouldn't seek to be rich. It's not what God wants us to do. You know, uh, <clears throat> look down. I had you turn to Matthew 6. Let's read this in uh, verse 19. It says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal, nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. So, when we seek for riches, <clears throat> we need to make sure that we're not seeking for the wrong riches. Okay, There is a rich, some riches we should seek for, but they're not on this earth. We should seek for eternal riches, Amen. for those crowns in heaven. You know, we don't need the world's riches. If I'm gonna, if I wanna, if I'm gonna be rich one day, I wanna be rich in eternity. Amen. You know, I wanna have crowns in heaven. I wanna, I wanna ha be, uh, you know, ruling and reigning with Christ. You know, I don't, I don't wanna gain up all this stuff to myself one day and then just die and it go to just whoever. I, I don't want that. I, I want, I want one day to have a a goodly heritage, a family that knows. You know, the way to heaven. A family that uh, not only knows the way, but goes out and tells others. You know, so they can gain crowds for themselves, and they can get those, those uh, heavenly treasures, you know, where moth and rust is not corrupt, or thieves break through and steal. Because your riches can be gone in a second on this earth. God can take them away at any time. You know, there's, there's no, no limit. God can do whatever He wants. Uh, he, can, he can cause it to disappear tonight before you get home. Somebody breaks into your accounts. It's just uh, numbers in the bank. And it, it happens. It happens to people. So we need to seek for you know riches in heaven. And it says, "No man can serve two masters." It says, "Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also." So we don't want our heart to be attached to the world through the love of money. We don't want to work to be rich. We just want to work. So we can feed our families, we can put a roof over their head, <clears throat> we can uh, you know, not be a derelict, and we can, uh, we can just live our lives and then still have time to go out and, and win these crowns for, for Jesus Christ. Do the real work. You know, go out and, and work for God in His vineyard. Go work today in my vineyard. That's what God said. You know, we need to go out, we need to work in His vineyard, bring those people in, <clears throat> and 
We need to just not love money. So the conclusion of this sermon, you know, do these four things and God's going to bless you. And not only you, but God will bless your masters. If you work for somebody and you're doing these things and God's looking down at, you know, one of his children and he sees this, God's going to bless your master. If your master's, you know, even unsaved masters. I mean, look, Potiphar was being blessed for Joseph ruling in his house. The prison, the keeper of the prison being blessed for letting Joseph, I mean, everything that Joseph did. I mean, Pharaoh was blessed for Joseph. I mean, he saved much people alive. So, you know, don't drag to work. Number one, be on time, be early. This is going to help you succeed in your, at your job. And, you know, do what you're told. Don't complain. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, ask. That's, that's very simple. It's not hard to do. Number three, work like your boss is watching because God is always watching. Our Heavenly Father is watching. And number four, don't work, don't strive to be rich on this earth. You know, it's vain. It's vain glory. Rather, strive to be rich in heaven, you know, so to speak. You know, have those, those eternal crowns. So that's, that's the, the gist of the sermon is we need to get a job and do it right. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, just thank you for this day. I just thank you for the, this church. I just thank you for everyone that's here tonight. I pray that we would uh, get jobs and, and do them right, Lord, and, and work as if you're, you're always watching. We you know you're always watching us, Lord, and we want to please you with our work of our hands. And, uh, and also we need to go work in your vineyard as well, Lord. I pray that you'll give everybody safe travels home tonight. And just be with us the rest of this week. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.